disturbing, disgusting, disgraceful. These words describe a repetitive, grossly common theme throughout history, lack of accountability. We do not name problems as they arise, and because we have not named a problem, we cannot identify a solution. The United States has yet to recognize it's a part of colonization, of its odd obsession with saving women and children, yet imposing limitations on our lives through sexism, its structural creation and continuation of racism, and its refusal to allow others to live freely and differently if they do not love or look the same. Which leads me into yet another problem the United States has yet to recognize, sexual violence. At this time, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Please stand up if you are able to, or adapt how you would like if you want to participate. Please stand up if you identify as a woman. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, please stand up if you identify as a member of the LGBTQIA community. Thank you. You may sit down. You may be wondering why I asked those questions. Well, for those of you who did stand, you might represent a portion of the population who fall within these statistics. One out of every six American women have been the victim of attempted or completed rape. One in five women, one in 16 men in college are sexually assaulted. One out of 71 men are survivors of rape. 46.6% of lesbians, 74.9% of bisexual women, 43.3% of heterosexual women have reported that they have experienced some form of sexual violence over their lifetime. 20.8% of gay men, 47.4% of bisexual men, and 20.8% of heterosexual men have reported sexual violence during their lifetime. And nearly one in 10 women and one in 45 men have been raped by an intimate partner. Behind each one of these statistics that I list are real people. They're people that you see every day on your way to get a coffee, people you work with, people you sit in class with, and people in this auditorium. Take a moment to look around you. You saw everyone who stand. If there's 100 people in this auditorium, at a minimum, 10 people in here are survivors of sexual violence. Rape is the most underreported crime. On college campuses alone, 90% of survivors do not report their assault. Now, why is this? Our world has proven that if you are not of value to our capitalist society, you are neglected. You are forgotten about. Revealing that systems that were once built to help people also oppress people. Examples of this are not only noted on the statistics I named, but also on various social media posts, whether it's videos, photos, or voice recordings. You name it, and it's circling the internet as we speak. Let's also remember that the issue of sexual violence is intersectional. I cannot continue to give this TED Talk without identifying and discussing how black and brown women are disproportionately affected by this. According to the National Center on Violence Against Women in the Black Community, for every black woman who reports rape, at least 15 women do not. One in four black girls will be sexually abused before they turn 18. One in five black women are survivors of rape. 35% of black women experience some form of contact sexual violence during their lifetime. 40 to 60% of black women report being in some sort of coercive sexual contact by the age of 18. 
And lastly, 17% of black women experience sexual violence, which is higher than the average for example, white women. And it's important to note that because women of color and people of color make up a smaller portion of the general population in the United States alone. The Institute for Women's Policy Research also reports that more than 20% of black women are raped during their lifetime, again, which is higher than the normal rate among white women. So why are we here? Why are you all sitting here taking your lovely Saturday listening to me speak? Well, for those of you who don't know, my name is Claire. I'm 20 years old, and I'm the one in five. Unfortunately, as statistics show, I am not the only person who has taken on the identity of a survivor of sexual assault. Whether that be sexual harassment during a job or internship, or you were raped your freshman year of college. I am not alone in claiming this title. When I was 18, I decided to start therapy my freshman year of college here at UMass. Soon after beginning therapy, the phrase, the body keeps the score, would come up in conversations with my therapist and I. And before I knew it, things finally started to make sense. I was violated in a way that no one ever should be violated, and in turn, as a result, I was not able to have control over my physical or mental self. My body kept the score. I was tired of fighting a silent war that only my therapist and partner knew about. And by referring to a silent war, I mean the time period where I, like many survivors, could not come to terms with what had happened. I couldn't name that I had been raped, not only because I couldn't say the word out loud, but because of the stigma around sexual assault. I couldn't grasp the idea that I became another statistic. I was disgusted with myself. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I couldn't even stand the own feeling of my own hand just grazing my thigh. My body did not feel like it was mine. How could this have happened to me? I did exactly what society says. I was polite. I was kind to others and I showed people nothing but love. I kept quiet when men said things that were supposed to be a compliment but really weren't. I dressed appropriately. I did it all. Yet here I am in front of you telling you how difficult it was for me to identify what happened as rape. After finally coming to terms with the idea that I did not do this to myself, I did not ask for it, and it was not my fault, I grew angry and frustrated. So I began searching, how could I help other survivors with their silent wars? I began enrolling in classes that taught me just how deeply ingrained sexual violence is into not only this country, but around the world. Fast forward to September of this past year, the UMass student body came out in hundreds to support survivors. Students gathered in front of a fraternity on our campus and listened to countless people get up and courageously tell their story and express their frustrations. Thus paving the way for myself and other students, Anna Kanayak, Audrey Gabriel, Haywan Weldhai, and Hayden Latimer Island to pass the Survivor's Bill of Rights on campus. <laughs> the Survivor's Bill of Rights is a policy we implemented in an effort to advocate for survivors on campus on a broader level. Since then, we continue to fight to create a safer space for students to blossom. Now don't get me wrong, there are amazing things going on behind the scenes. As our lovely uh, MC said, I'm a part of the Title IX student-led task force. I'm a senator in the SGA and I'm on the Social Justice and Empowerment Committee. I'm also working to help update and uh, create a better um, 
prevention method with the prevention uh, education that first year students have to take before they even set foot on this campus. As you can see, I am more than my sexual assault. Not only am I a full-time student, but I'm a full-time advocate for others. The prevention of sexual violence is the reason why I wake up and get out of bed each and every day. However, my actions alone are not enough. It is not enough because these things are still happening. Yes, we are actively making an effort to figure out how to make reporting less traumatizing and easier to understand, but we must stop the problem, the problem that has been identified before it starts. Sexual violence is that problem. It's not just confined to UMass Amherst. There are students at Boston College, Harvard, Stanford, Nebraska, Northwestern, and countless other institutions who are fighting for the same thing we have and continue to do here. All we want is to be free from sexual violence. Sexual violence is not just an issue that affects college-age students. It can affect anyone of all identities, of any background at any point in their life. Now, I understand talking about sex is uncomfortable, but we need to create this space in order to one day end sexual violence altogether. I want to make it clear. I am not normalizing rape. I am normalizing a long-awaited conversation. The importance of respecting someone's boundaries is a concept that we're taught from a very young age. With that in mind, we also must name that rape isn't the only form of sexual assault. It's when you're sitting next to someone and they grab your lower back and you never gave them permission to do that. Or when a coworker thinks that they like the color of their pants, of your pants, and so they compliment you by rubbing their hand on your thigh. We've been over-sexualized from such a young age, and the only people that are continuously held accountable are us. Growing up, we were told we can't sit with our legs open and manspread. We were sent home if our tank tops were not three fingers wide or if our shorts didn't go past our fingertips. We were told to hide our, our menstrual products as we walked to the bathroom from class. But then as we get older, our bodies look a certain way and they change. And over time, the expectations of what a body is supposed to look like has changed. But what hasn't is what makes someone deemed breedable. You heard me correctly, breedable. We are taught to discover what clothing brings out our figures at the same time, though, we can't reveal too much because then we'll be looked at as damaged goods, as used. We are also taught to be flirtatious and use what our mothers gave us while also actively trying to overcome countless barriers created to prevent us from being taken seriously in society. I'm going to ask you a couple questions again. However, you'll just raise your hand. You don't need to stand. Raise your hand if when you were a child, you were told if a friend said no when you asked to borrow their toy, you were told you need to respect that decision because it wasn't your toy, it was your friend's. Okay, okay. And now raise your hand if you were also told that if you crossed that boundary, so if I stole my friend's toy, even though they said no, there'd be consequences like being put in timeout. We've been taught from such a young age to be kind and to respect each other's boundaries. So where does this concept get lost over time? Recall a time where you saw a cute dog. You're walking on campus or at your job or your hometown and you see your neighbor walking with their dog. Do you ask them to pet the dog first or do you just walk up and start petting it? What about a time you forgot your water bottle at the gym or in class and you're thirsty? Do you take your friend's water bottle or do you ask before doing the action? This is a reminder to all people that you own your body. Your body is yours. 
and you have every right to give permission for someone to even come close to you or to not give permission. Growing up, I was always taught the importance of respecting one's personal bubble. I vividly remember learning a song that goes, stop, don't touch me there, this is my private square. And I think about that often because I wonder, was this also talked about with the boys in my classes? Or were they given a free pass because boys will be boys? I started off today by saying if we don't name a problem, then we cannot create a solution. Here we are, naming the problem, so here is a solution. It is a core belief of mine that education is one of the most valuable and powerful forms of prevention. So let's start here. We have to say the word rape. We have to say sexual violence. We have to say sexual assault. We cannot tiptoe around these words and phrases and pretend that they do not exist because they do, and they affect people like me for the rest of our lives. So if you have someone in your life who does dance around, you know, how severe sexual violence is or diminishes the effects of it, you must educate them. We must all promise ourselves to continue to have these difficult and maybe uncomfortable conversations and do our damn best to make sure no one else has to claim the title of survivor. As you walk away from this lovely building on my college campus during Sexual Assault Awareness Month, I ask that you remember me saying these two phrases. Rape is real, sexual violence is real, thank you.